Hey RV people! Right now I am sitting out in front of a T-Mobile store location. The reason I'm here is because I've been doing some research on our mobile internet plans and also thinking about what our experience is with uh, using Cricut. So if you guys recall, last year I decided that I was going to sign up for a Cricut prepaid mobile hotspot plan. On a month-to-month -month basis, I pay $35 and you get 20 gigs of uh, hotspot mobile internet data. For the most part, the data use was okay. When we were using a bit more, Cricut had a pretty good option of, of letting you add more data uh, for a certain amount of uh, dollars, but if I look back at my bills, like from time to time when the usage gets heavy, that bill started to add up. And the other difference is that what I've noticed last year, when we, wherever we went with Cricket, the internet speeds that I was getting were uh, like less than 10, so we were, I was getting like maybe 6 or 7 megabytes per second uh, on a downlink and, you know, obviously even less on uh, uplink. For the most part, that definitely got us by. Uh, when I'm traveling by myself, like that type of uh, bandwidth is definitely enough for me, for me to get by. You know, when we're traveling as a family and she's watching TV and I'm working at the same time, I think that is an area where it might get a little sketchy. One of my hypotheses is, is that Cricket is a subsidiary of AT&T and as such, they, the data speeds kind of get prioritized to AT&T, so Cricket gets like a share of what the data speeds are. That's why I'm here today. I'm going to go check out uh, the T-Mobile plant. I'm going to sign up for it, and I think there's a hotspot that we purchased with it. Um, and then I'll take it home, and we'll try it out and see how everything goes. Was pretty straightforward. Was in there for 10 15 minutes and got a Alcatel hotspot along with the plan. It was $55 a month, but then it becomes 50 because if you sign up for auto pay, so why not? So uh, that was a quick in and out of a T Mobile store. Let's go home and then I want to test the speeds and just see how everything works comparatively speaking with, uh, with Cricket. So we'll see you at home. All right, so we're back from T-Mobile. And uh, not only are we back, we're actually a week later because I just haven't had time between work and, um, you know, obviously prioritizing Jackson. Haven't had time to really sit down and take um, the service out for a test drive. But just a quick recap. Last week I went to pick up the Alcatel Link Zone 2 from T-Mobile and I also signed up for their um, mobile internet offer right now. It's $50 a month for 100 gigabytes. I think it's a limited time offer so hopefully by the time you guys see this it's still around. I also have my Cricut Turbo Hotspot that I got last year. Uh, both of these are, are you know fairly like rudimentary uh, hotspot devices. This one I think I bought for like $90 last year. Uh, this was also $90 when I went to pick up last week. Here is the device. It's kind of, it's light. Maybe the battery's not in there yet. Here's the battery. Oh, the battery is hefty. So the battery is uh, 4,400 milliamp hours. And uh, one thing that they said is that this thing, on top of obviously being a hotspot, you could actually use it to charge uh, other devices. So it acts like a, um, what do you call it? Um, a power bank. Yes. There's a charger in here. Uh, that's the other thing I like about this. Right now, this, um, last year this uses micro USB. And so, kind of getting outdated and you end up having to carry an extra cable around. This uses USB-C. So, whatever I use to charge my phone, I could use to charge this. And so, you, you end up just having less, a little bit less clutter. Probably not a big difference, but... Before I go on, I'm going to take a photo of the inside of the unit. Because to set it up and everything, uh, apparently they need you to connect to the network that the unit produces. However, they tell you to turn the unit on. So when you turn the unit on, your battery's in there covering up the information. So you just go ahead and take a photo of this. Alright, well, we're connected to the hotspot. 
I'm gonna turn the Cricut device on. And now we're ready for our speed test. All right, uh, I think I got everything set up. What I realized is that um, I guess cellular reception in my office is not that great. Right now I'm set up to do three different speed tests. It's definitely fastest running off of your actual phone device, um, even though Alcatel you know, also works off of uh, T-Mobile Towers. This, is, this doesn't even say T-Mobile as a service, this actually has T-Mobile as a service. So you can start to see like there's some network management things happening there. They prioritize the phones over the hotspots, but then also within the networks, you know, you have T-Mobile um, going much faster, probably twice the speeds that I'm getting with Cricket, but Cricket, Cricket is a subsidiary. It also doesn't have a, um, if I were to want to try, I would look at getting an AT&T uh, mobile internet plan, but uh, they don't have something that's economically priced like T-Mobile does. Uh, anyway, that's just a quick speed test. There were three things happening. Um, your Google Fi, which works off of T-Mobile, and I was doing it on my phone. And then the Alcatel Link Zone 2, which works off of T-Mobile signal directly, um, but it is a hotspot, so I wonder if there's a bit of network management there, because the speeds I was pulling from this was a little bit slower than what I was getting from the phone um, off of Google Fi. Google Fi. Um, and then Cricket, uh, which uses AT&T towers, but is clearly subject to some type of network management. Um, and then I just read a bit more in depth that um, there is quite a bit of network management that Cricket plans are subject to unless you select like the highest tier, which even for Cricket, it's not that expensive. It's like $65 a month, unlimited, yada, yada, yada. And then that particular plan is not subject for network to network management. Everything else, all the other data plans, all the other plans are subject. So that now I understand why I'm, I'm never pulling high speeds. Um, I'm pulling in higher than Cricket on the Alcatel, which is working through T-Mobile. Uh, but then if I'm in a pinch, um, I would probably go to the phone here, which is working off Google Fi. So with Google Fi, keep in mind, we're on the pay-as-you-go plan. So for two lines, we pay $35 a month, and then the data is pay-as-you-go. So every gig, we pay $10. But we, we typically count on the fact that we are at home most of the time, so we're connected to Wi-Fi. Um, or if we are on the road, we're connected to one of these guys so that we're not really using data on the phone. Now, if I'm in a pinch, I probably would um, use it. I think I did it when we were up in Michigan last year where at our campground, couldn't, we couldn't really get anything, didn't really have any signal. So I ran, I drove to, uh, drove into town and to like download some stuff quick so we could enter entertain ourselves for a couple of nights and then came back and that, that that's what we did. Um, so we'll, we'll see between the two, de two devices and then our phones um, what we'll get into from a internet availability standpoint this year. But um, in case uh, some of you are new to RVing and you're looking for options, um, hopefully this gives you three options to look at that in my mind are fairly economical. Um, but you know, if you're looking at like maybe a sure thing, you probably pay more with AT&T with a direct AT&T plan or with a direct Verizon plan. Anyway, that's it for this video. Hope this gives you a little bit to think about, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.